Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Cheryl Duvall. Cheryl, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. You're at Neocon East in Baltimore, and you agreed to be my correspondent there since I couldn't make it this year. And we'll talk about the show in just a minute, but just for the listener's benefit, let's talk about your background. You are a classically trained interior designer from the University of Maryland. And you started out practicing in that area, but now you're the principal with a company called Avance, which is linking the workplace design with organizational development. Do I have that right? That's right. Fill in some gaps on how you got from doing interior design work to starting this Avance company. I've been a corporate interior designer, so primarily designing offices, mostly corporate headquarters for many years. And I actually went back to school and got my graduate degree. I have a master's in positive organization development and change from Case Western Reserve University. And I did that because as an interior designer, I was changing so much up for some of my customers, for instance, moving them out of private office into open plan. And they needed help with understanding the change so that they could embrace it when they moved in. I actually have a master's in change. And I actually now focus on change management which is a process that parallels the interior design process. So you actually get into the process of helping people design their offices based on the way they want to change behavior. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Well, let's talk about the show. It is the second day of the show. It's in Baltimore. Most people know that have been to Neocon East, they, they know that one of the reasons you go is because you're not very far from Washington in Baltimore, and there's this huge vertical sector called the institutional category. So a lot of people go to Neocon East to interact with the planners and government and the government shut down. So how has that affected this show? Yeah, that was interesting because I thought I would see some of the GSA designers because they're on furlough, right? So right. I figured, oh, they'll be here right. in anyway, even though they're, you know, because it's a conference and I would go on my spare time if that was something that, you know, I had the opportunity to go. But I learned yesterday that they're actually prohibited from attending. So even if they wanted to be, they could not. Now, I did see a couple of contractors walking around. So if you're a contractor to the GSA, then you could be here. But if you were employed by the government, you were literally not allowed to be here. And now that the government shutdown has finally ended, as I was listening to the news, and I thought, well, I'm guessing they can't be here today either because it would be their first day back to work after so long. So it'll be interesting to see if we see any of them here today. You know, I don't want to get off on a political tangent here, but I'm still confused. If you can pay people to keep people out of the parks, why can't you pay right. people to run the parks? Right. I know. <laughs> it, this whole thing doesn't make any sense. No. All right, so back to the show. Yeah. How is traffic despite the situation with the government? It felt a little lighter yesterday. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what it feels like today. But it was not nearly as light as I thought it was going to be without the government designer. So it felt pretty good yesterday. It was interesting. I was also here with somebody who had never been to Neocone before. It's a colleague of mine who's actually speaking here on social media and blogging. And he walked in, and he's used to coming here. He, he covers NASCAR, so he usually comes to car shows here mm -hmm. at the convention center. And he walked in, and he was taken aback. I mean, he lost his breath when he saw the white carpet, because the New York Times show is known for its white carpet. And he said, oh, he said, everything popped. He said, how awesome of, of it for interior designers and architects to walk into a show where the carpet's white and it makes every booth and every exhibit pop. And that, so that was interesting to be with somebody not from the industry who had that, you yeah. know, understanding. It feels really good. Keynote speakers have been wonderful. You know, Michael Gray spoke yesterday, Suzanne Tech speaks today. So there's a lot of good reasons to be here. Actually, I think that's one of the primary reasons to go is for some of the, the seminars that are being given. But there are some good flooring companies that are there. I don't know if you've been by the Bentley booth, but I heard they won Best of Show with their booth. So that's that's interesting. Their booth can be seen from anywhere on that showroom floor. Mm -hmm. It's very different because they hung these rope-like things from the ceiling, you know, coming down. So mm -hmm. I love when exhibitors do that because they do draw attention in a different way. If they're really only focused at the floor level and they're not also trying to bring that design all the way up into the ceiling mm -hmm. well, as much as they can. But Bentley did a good job of that. Yeah. It certainly draws attention. So what else are you seeing? It doesn't have to be flooring related since you have a design eye. Anything interesting mm -hmm. at the show this year? 
it is always interesting to see how the different manufacturers are drawing people to their booth. It is interesting to see how they're focusing on the different behaviors that workers are going through and the, the changing modes of work and how technology is freeing them. Some of the manufacturers have actually focused on the story of what really are we trying to accomplish with the products that we're designing for the workers. And I think manufacturers who really try to embrace the story and embrace why they do what they do, that appeals to designers. I have some of my customers in yesterday, actually, walking around, and they wanted to walk around, and they were mesmerized. This is their first time at the show, but really understanding the why of the product, not necessarily, oh, this is a chair, or this is a sit-stand table, or this is a carpet. They wanted to understand where, where was the inspiration for that. You know, how does this product come to be? And why should that be important to me? What's in it for me? So the companies that are focusing on answering that question, I think, are the ones that are going to be very successful. Now, Cheryl, I'm sure you go to Neocon every year, the one in Chicago. How does this show compare to to Neocon in Chicago? I've only missed two Neocons in Chicago since I entered this industry. So I've been to 31 of the last 33 uh, Neocons in Chicago, and I've been to every Neocon East since it began. The differences between the shows, it is very different because this is a booth-based show, right? So it is only what the manufacturers can do in a limited space, and they have to be very selective about the products that they bring and what they show. So I think for carpet and flooring companies, it's a lot easier for them than it is for furniture companies who can only bring a certain amount. They can't bring their whole system line, right? You know? right. So it's always, for me, I think that the carpet and fabric companies have a much easier time. I'm not sure they'll be, they'll agree with that because I know shows are hard to put together and always design properly. But I feel like we get a really good representation when we come to the shows of flooring and fabric companies because they can still show us most of their lines, whereas the furniture companies have to, at a show like Mia County, really pick and choose what they're bringing and what they're focusing on. They might just focus on a chair that they brought to market, for example, rather than a full system line. All right. Well, we're about to run out of time. I did want to mention that you're getting ready to give a presentation on no office, no problem. That should be interesting. We should do another interview later about that topic in itself because I'm sure flooring has a big contribution to what happens there. Absolutely. I believe very strongly that flooring companies, whether it's carpet or any kind of hard surface flooring, flooring is the place, and I say this all the time, that interior designers start. We start with the flooring finish and the flooring patterns and colors before we select anything else. I mean, 97% of the time in my career, that's where I start. So for me, carpeting companies and flooring manufacturers should really be, they're always at the forefront of where we start with our design process. And it's no different in co-working environments, which is what I'm, I'm about to speak to, where noise and acoustics and just the general feel of the space is set by the tone of the flooring as soon as you walk in. Okay, great. Cheryl, well, I appreciate your time. Again, we've been talking to Cheryl Duvall, who's principal with Avance, and you've been listening to Kempar yeah. and FloorDaily.net.